Welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This time for our first division show, Jar Brown and Gary Spain here with you once again to review the action from the past couple of days in the second tier of Irish football. And it was very much a weekend for the away team. Three away victories out of the five games. And of course, first defeat for league leaders, Cabin Tivoli. I suppose that's the best place to start, Gary, was uh, the game in Stradbrook Friday night. An impressive 3-0 victory for UCD. Colin Whelan put them 1-0 in front. And then a brace for Yolo Mandy completed the scoring. Obviously, I have to mention, well, big turning points in this game. Paul Fox hits the post when it's 1-0. It's a chance to make a 1-1. And then a few minutes later, just before halftime, key pair for Kevin TV. Kevin Knight gets sent off. And the students made their um, extra man counts in the second half. Yeah, they sure did. A massive win for UCD. And I think they will argue they were a goal up. As you said, Colin Whelan's goal before uh, Kevin Knight got sent off. But a crucial player for Cabo. And he's going to get a couple of matches at least of a suspension, which is going to hurt them as well. Um, but yeah, a great win for UCD. Um, another brace from Yo-Yo Magdi. I mean, they actually they played with 10 men and were a goal down uh, they ended up with nine men actually against that loan. So they had a couple of suspensions and they came back with 10 men to lead and wait and beat at loan with a couple of goals from Yo-Yo. And he had been out of the side for a few weeks. And uh, he certainly gave Andy Myler a nice problem by scoring the goals against that loan. And I don't think there's any question now that he'll be out of the side after scoring another couple against Cabo. So uh, UCD, um, they're... Great win, a couple of great back-to-back wins put together after a disappointing game out in Bray. And uh, they're well in the the playoff hunt. And uh, who knows, maybe they could be chasing Cabo down for the title yet. Even if the UCD don't end up getting promoted this season, do you think Yolo Mandy will be a player playing in the Premier Division next year? Are you surprised that some clubs didn't actually come in from during the off-season last winter? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what his situation now is, whether he's on scholarship or, or whatever in the college. But um, yeah, he's um, he certainly scores goals. He scored quite a few last year. And uh, I don't think, I mean, I said this on last week's show, I actually don't think of all the managers in the league, I think Andy Myler will be given the most time. And uh, at UCD are, are, are a great club like that because... They they produce, if you look around the likes of the top teams in the league, and there's so many ex-UCD players at Shamrock Rovers, at Dundalk, you're talking to the likes of Neil Ferrugia, Liam Scales, Dave McMillan, so many, many more, Robbie Benson, etc. at Pats. So many good players have come through UCD, and they lose them, they come back, they build again. And I actually thought UCD were going into another one of these rebuilding phases, and maybe they are. I mean, maybe it'll be a couple of years. But, um, and Andy Myler will be given time. But they've certainly strung a couple of good wins together. And uh, at, at this stage, you have to say they'll at least be in the playoffs. Maybe winning division, winning the division is probably too big an ask. But um, they, 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 won't be, they won't be easy opponents. And uh, I think they'll, they'll certainly be in the playoff hunt. Yeah, they're five points now behind Kevin Dively. Pat Devlin said after the match that he's no complaints about the result. Despite, obviously, the heavy scoreline in the end, I don't think it'll be uh, pressed to panic both stations just yet for Kevin Tivoli. No, I mean, they had been on a fantastic run. They would I mean, coming off a, a fantastic win in Longford as well. Um, so they, the run had to end sometime. I mean, it's their first defeat since, I think, going back, was it last September or something like that? In the, in the regular league. I know they lost in the playoffs. But... Um, yeah, they had been on a great run. They, they're still top of the table. There's still a couple of points clear. And yeah, definitely not one to press the panic button. And, and Pat Devlin is some manager. He keeps he keeps doing it year in, year out. And uh, yeah, they still they still have to be, even though they've just been beaten 3 nil at home, they still have to be favourites for the title. But we'll go on and talk about Drogheda and whoever else. But yeah. Uh, and Bray, and they will be they will be looking over their shoulder because it's it's getting tighter now. Yeah, they have an interesting cup tie coming up this night week in Damon Park against Bohemians, and of course Pat Devon will go up against his son in law, Keith Long. Another interesting staff from that game as well. That was used to these first away victory since August two thousand eighteen. Um so it's mad to think that they actually didn't win a single away game in their whole season last year in the Premier Division. 
you touched on it there, draw that they are now the closest challengers to Kevin TV. They're two points behind. Obviously, after involved in that crazy game against that loan last Friday, it's been a good week for them. Four goals, two clean sheets, and six points. I watched the highlights of this game on Wexford's YouTube channel. The scoreline was really harsh on Wexford. First half, they played really well. They had a couple of good chances. And even when they gave away the two goals at the start of the second half, they never gave in, never threw in the towel. And on balance of play, deserved at least to get a goal to their name on the scoreboard. And they'll also be a little bit frustrated because obviously Huey Douglas getting the third goal from a corner. But Stephen Meany and Mark Doyle's goals also took big deflections. Yeah, the, the two deflected out. Actually, I thought Mark Doyle had got the, the both of the first two goals, but I could be wrong on that. Um, Probably it's just a thing. Wexford, uh, just in the description underneath, said Stephen Mean, you know, as maybe it was Mark Doyle that got the first one as well. Yeah, possi- possibly, Gerard. I mean, I, I was going to ask you about a, a, a disputed goal down that loan as well, because we've got different names for that one as well. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it was it was a really um, a really good win for Drogheda. Wexford probably feel they took a hammering down in Cove and a similar story. They were beaten four 0 They could have they could have scored three or four themselves, and uh, the Cove keeper had a had a, a blinder that night. Um, yeah, they had as I said they had quite a few chances, but Drogheda took those probably a bit lucky with the two deflected goals. Um, whoever Mark Doyle certainly got one of them, whether he got the two of them or not. And uh, Huey Douglas was a fantastic signing for for Drogheda. I've always rated him at Bray, a fantastic defender. I think that's his first goal for Drogheda. And uh, yeah, Drogheda are now the closest challengers to Cabin Teeley. At the start of the season, they were probably the team, certainly the team I fancied and quite a few people fancied, to, to win the division. They had built a good squad. They kept it together from last year. They'd done really well. A bit unfortunate to lose to Finn Harps in the playoff. And uh, so th- this will give th- th- this win uh, and Cabo's defeat will certainly give them a boost. But um, yeah, Wexford, I suppose they, they feel they can't buy a goal at the moment, but shipping a couple of, actually, even in the Shamrock Rovers 2 defeat, again, beating a couple of goals, they hit the bar, they had a few other chances as well. So uh, they'll probably feel they could have had a two all, three all, four all draws, but they're taking a few hammerings. Um, but I, I don't think Wexford are going to be in the mix for the playoffs. Um, Drogheda are in the mix for the title. And if not, they'll be very dangerous in the playoff. Yeah, it certainly seems from a Drogheda kind of point of view, because on the previous few shows, I've always kind of been a little bit critical that they're a little bit more open and exposed at the back. But then back-to-back clean sheets have certainly put, them, put me in my place a little bit, and they do seem to be tightening up at the back now. Yeah, so it, it, it's um, and they probably had conceded quite a few goals away from home as well. So uh, it's probably good to go away from home and keep the clean sheet because they had been pretty solid at United Park. So yeah, they I mean they were under under quite a bit of pressure. They had to do a bit of work, and uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll be very happy. Two clean sheets on the bounce, six points, and uh, coming off a late goal in that loan and probably a very disappointing 3-3 draw frankly they'll be they'll be very happy to get 6 out of 6 and, and really happy that Cabo lost as well I mentioned it's, uh, at the start of the show there was 3 away victories it was just a sole home victory this weekend but that came for Cove against Longford on Saturday night a massive victory there for the East Cork Club um, Connor Connor Drennan and Stephen O'Leary with the two goals uh, a victory that firmly, firmly keeps Cove in the promotion picture and a huge stint to Athlone's uh, automatic promotion hopes. Yes, so uh, you mentioned three away victories and probably you could say a surprise home victory. I mean, uh, Longford, as we'd said, coming off the the back of that uh, bad home defeat by Cabo and Cove going into it in great confidence having hammered Wexford. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a, a massive win for Cove. Uh, Conor Drynan is his first goal for the club. He just signed from Carrigaline United, and it was it was a tap in actually. It was a very very easy goal. He couldn't really miss, but um, and a lovely back heel from Stephen O'Leary for the second. But Cove were full value for the win, and they're only a couple of points behind uh, behind Longford now. So uh, I think they have a real chance of the playoffs and. Stuart Ashton will probably feel his side are coming. They're coming with a bit of a run now, and uh, if they can get into the playoffs, who knows what can happen? Yeah, two big victories for them at home in the last couple of weeks, and again another team that also kept back-to-back 
clean sheets that really does put the icing on the cake. Yeah, they're just two points behind Longford, so they definitely seem of the chasing pack at the moment the best place to push for them playoffs. I, I think I think definitely um, if you look at the table, um, but we probably go on to talk about Galway and uh, their new manager. So, um, uh, well, we can talk about Galway. I think Cove, if you look at the table and their recent form, they're definitely the best bet. Galway haven't won a match yet this season, but you have to think if you're, you're signing John Caulfield as your manager, it's a real statement of intent. And uh, it, it, look. Frankly, we expect them to be far higher up the table at this stage. But um, you keep thinking they're going to turn it around. And they're going to go on a run. And uh, I still wouldn't rule Galway out of the playoffs either. They've a lot of work to do, I think, which would be only the biggest concern. Not even just the fact they haven't won the game, but eight points now behind Longford for that last spot. Obviously, if Shamrock Rovers 2 were to creep in there, then the sixth spot could become available. And that might actually be the most realistic prospect. Uh, as you mentioned, they got a new manager, John Coffey. He wasn't in charge for Friday night's game against Bray. Colin Fortune was on the uh, the sideline. But by all accounts, obviously Bray, who you talked about last week, has been dark horses for promotion. This would be few as two points dropped for them, obviously because they're up against a team that was struggling. But by the sounds of things as well, from various reports I read, they were much the better team. Like The man of the match was Galway goalkeeper Matthew Connor. So I think that kind of gives you a good indication of what you need to know about this game. Yeah, he was absolutely superb. He made at least four top-class saves. I might have been in the Premier Division show a bit critical and mentioned Peter Cherry, uh, Gary Rogers, I Mark Magnolti. Uh, I might have been cr- critical of some goalies in the Premier Division this weekend, having sung the praises a week earlier. Matthew Connor, uh, yeah, absolutely superb. And uh, he earned a point for Galway because Bray were much the better team. Galway could have stolen it right at the end. Uh, they had a couple of chances, and Aaron Barry was sent off for Bray. And he's going to be a big loss with his suspension because um, it's himself and Killian Cantwell. The thing I like about Bray is they're so solid at the back. Uh, I think that's a, a third, is a third clean, at least a third clean sheet in a row. Um, they've been, they don't concede too many goals, and uh, they'll be very tough to beat. And a uh, lot of Premier Division experience there. And uh, but they'll probably feel it was two points dropped to them in DC Park because for certainly for the 80 minutes where they had 11 men, they were totally on top and uh, probably should have won the game. Then we go on to Galway. As I said, John Caulfield has only been announced. Um, he wasn't in charge on Friday night. Um, look, John Caulfield is not going to Galway without uh, having serious intent. Of, of getting promotion this season. And yeah, they are, as you said, they're eight points behind Longford and it, it's a big gap, but they, they have, they, they actually made some, some good signings over the, the off season. And uh, frankly, I expect them to start the season a lot better. I expect them to come back from lockdown a lot better. And I certainly expect them under John Caulfield to be a lot better. And uh you have to think they're. You just have to think they're going to be in the mix, and uh, they're going to start stringing wins together. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's with a view to next season. Um, uh, if they don't make a run at the playoffs, you have to think, managed by John Caulfield, they'll be favourites to win the first division next season. Yeah, it's definitely been the big talking point from the first division off the, the field the last couple of days. And, and Caulfield, even himself, has highlighted that he's his number one target with Galway to get promotion. Is it is he just the exact point when the Galway needs at the moment? He's not going to play, obviously, the most exciting brand and style of football. We know that from his days with Cork. But given the situation that Galway are in, he's a man that brings great experience and can just kind of galvanise things and maybe give a bit of a boost and a lift. And is that exactly just what Galway are crying out for at the moment? Yeah, it's, I mean... It, that's what they're crowd. I mean, he's going to go in. He's he was an experience. He was a great player in the league, great goal scorer, and, and a great manager. I mean, he, he won the league only a couple, about three years ago. Um, he's going to have Galway really well organised. He's he, he's going to have them fighting tooth and nail for every ball, and uh, they're going to be very tough to beat. Yeah, they, they probably won't play the most uh, attractive style of football, but. Uh, he'll certainly play the percentages. He'll, um, I, I think he'll get results. Look, 
he 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 came into Cork, and he basically transformed them because they weren't they weren't title contenders, and uh, he made them title contenders for a few years. It was Cork and Dundalk. Uh, they met every year in the cup final for a few years as well. They were the top two teams in the country. And uh, he doesn't become a bad manager overnight. And uh, it's a great coup for Galway. And uh, I know they're very excited about it. And uh, I know as a fan, and you can go on as anything, you, you want your team to win and not necessarily play the most attractive football. And if Galway are winning every week, and hopefully fans can go back to him in DC Park and other grounds very soon, but if Galway are winning every week and nobody's going to con uh, be too concerned about the style of play and the fans are going to be packing out him in DC Park. Yeah, obviously, of course, I'm going to take my bias hat off here and obviously have a soft spot for John Crawford, given that he's a fellow county man like myself from Roscommon. So I would like to see him do well Galway and work out. And obviously Galway as well, being a West of Ireland man myself, there's a club I always like to see do well and like, you know, get them back up to where they belong and that is in the Premier Division. If it's not going to be next season, hopefully the season after. Just going to wrap up then, looking back on the last game of the weekend. That was the game I was at myself in the Midlands at Lone Town, Neil Shamrock Rovers 2-4. You wouldn't have thought at half time that one team was going to run away with this. It was a pretty even game. I thought at Lone early on when the game was a little bit slow to get going, looked a better team. Like They definitely looked like a team that that way to pass the ball and put some good moves there. They maybe struggled a little bit up in the final third, which I, I still kind of find a bit strange, even though they're bottom of the league. Prior to ball being kicked at the weekend, they were still the third highest scorers in the league, which is quite mad. But they just seem to be a little bit of a confidence team as well because as soon as Rovers, who made a great start to the second half, you can kind of see right that Adam or Aiden Price really got stuck into them at half time. They just kind of drifted out again, particularly after 2 0. And it was only inevitable then at that stage that one team was going to run away with it comfortably. And that's exactly what happened in the end. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd actually seen that loan, and as you said, the problem is their is their defence. They're well able to score goals. I'd seen them lose to UCD. They were a goal up, playing eleven against ten. I, I know UCD actually went down to nine as well at one point, and that loan finished with ten as well. But they can't buy a win at the moment. They haven't won a game all season, um, and they would have been targeting this game as a potential win. And to be blown away in the albeit in the second half, uh, I believe Brandon Kavanagh was fantastic as well for Rovers too. But um, yeah, it, it'll be a bitter disappointment for Athlone. Um, for Shamrock Rovers, I mean, Aidan Price. I mean, he obviously they can't get promotion; they can't even be in the playoffs. So the remit really is to develop players, and they they seem to be doing really well, and uh, a lot of good young players coming through. Yeah, that's certainly from what I've seen in the evidence from Friday night. Like the future is very, very bright for Shamrock Rovers. Like the club in general at the moment just seems to be in such a good, solid, secure place. The senior team is really starting to flourish and obviously going well and looking good. They could add and win their first title in just over a decade or just under a decade, sorry. And then obviously you look at their, their second team and the amount of exciting young players that are coming through from that is, is really, really encouraging. And they have competed very well in this division. From that loan point of view, yeah, I agree with you. And even chatting to people after the game, they were disappointed. This was a game they targeted and they would have felt there were signs, even though they hadn't won games, there were signs over the last couple of weeks with the draw against Drogheda, the draw against Galway, even going back to the start of the month. This would have been a hammer blow for them. They do have a potential winnable game in the Cup now Friday night. Wexford aren't exactly on a good run. They're one of them teams down there at the bottom that at will be looking towards. But Wexford did go there recently and win as well. So it's is kind of getting a little bit hard to make a case for Athlone, who, aside who I felt last year started to make a good bit of improvements and seems to be on a bit of a rise and just seems maybe, while they are good going forward and scoring plenty of goals, but in general they do seem to be taking maybe just a little bit of a step back this year. Yeah, I think there were hopes they would have kind of kicked on a little bit. I, I don't think too many expected them to challenge for the playoffs or even for promotion, yeah. but I suppose they were hoping to be a little bit better than last season. And, uh, well, I think maybe they have shown it in, in fits and starts and some performances, but um, the results haven't borne that out. And uh, I suppose both teams will be looking for, for a win in that game. They'll both feel it's a good chance. Yeah, as I said, afterwards, well, as you mentioned, no one really kind of expect them to feature in the promotion push, but they said that's kind of 
the end of their promotion push by such your your journey in qualifying for Europe now starts next Friday. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, anyone still in the cup, you, you never know. You always have a chance. Uh, Bill, look, I mean, whoever wins is in the the last eight. And but uh, I think we might have had some crazy predictions on on this show in the past. But at Lone Town for Europe has got to be one of the craziest. But who knows? Um, just maybe in general, you could, yeah. Sorry, just just saying, like in general, like there, there will be good optimism for any of the first division clubs. They can do something like Galway, who. Like similar to this season, had a very very poor league campaign last year, but they came within inches of making an FBI Cup semi final last year, um, knocking out Cork along the way. Two years ago, Cove in the EA Sports Cup, they got to the final of that competition. So there is definitely potential for giant killings there for the first division clubs. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, it it can happen. I mean, I, I, I remember Sligo Rovers winning the cup as a as a first division club, beat Derry City in the final in '94. Um, couple of um probably not the only team that has done it as well but um yeah so who knows i think anyone still in the cup will always feel they got a chance yeah and she's also mentioned about ucd actually two years ago as well in 2018 they got to the fei cup semi-final get water for the good um beaten in the quarterfinals and get dundalk a good game so definitely obviously maybe not quite at home but i definitely think like the draw that you know the who dairy at home after a long trip from europe Cabin TV taking on Bohemians and their team as well to travel during the week. They could try and take advantage of a little bit of fatigue and, and tiredness there. But that's where we're going to wrap it up for our first division show for today. Gary, Gary, thanks very much for joining me, of course, and not just this show, but also the Premier Division show that we just done there prior to this show. Thanks, Joe. No worries. As I said uh, on the Premier Division show as well, we hope to get content from this weekend's FBI Cook Games on the channel. But anyway, keep tuned in, keep watching. Uh, thanks very much and I hope you're all keeping safe and well out there.